morning, friends. Happy Friday to all of you. This is your fourth stimulus check update and daily news report, where we cover all the breaking news in the world. In this video, I will be sharing with you what is exactly going on in Congress, including what lawmakers are going to do to avoid a government shutdown, which is scheduled in a few days, and how your debt could be forgiven through Biden's new loan forgiveness program. Friends, please make sure that you are subscribed to my channel and stay tuned in a video later today when I'll be announcing the three winners of this week's $100 Walmart gift card giveaway. I also want to briefly address one myth about inflated gas prices. They're not due to environmental measures. My effort to combat climate change is not raising the price of gas or increasing its availability it, what is doing, it's increasing the availability of jobs. Jobs building electric cars like the one I drove at the GM Detroit, at the GM factory in Detroit last week. For the hundreds of thousands of folks who brought one of those electric cars, they're going to save $800 to $1,000 in fuel costs this year. And we're going to put those savings within reach of more Americans and create jobs installing solar panels, batteries, electric heat pumps, jobs making those clean power generating devices. And by the way, deploying these technologies for each home where they're installed is going to save folks an additional hundreds of dollars in energy cost every year. Let's do that. Let's beat climate change with more extensive innovation and opportunities. We can make our economy and consumers less vulnerable to these sorts of price spikes when we do that. And finally, even as we meet Asian we meet to work uh, out this challenge, it's important to maintain perspective about where our economy stands today. The fact is, America has a lot to be proud of. We're experiencing the strongest economic recovery in the world. Uh, even after accounting for inflation, our economy is bigger and our families have more money in their pockets than they did before the pandemic. And America is the only major economy in the world that can say that. It's testament to the grit and determination of the American people, as well as our unique approach to this recovery and our focus on rebuilding our economy from the bottom up and the middle out, not the top down. Because of that approach, we're the only leading economy in the world where household income and the economy as a whole are stronger than they were before the pandemic hit. Let me close with this. This Thanksgiving, we have so much to be grateful for. Vaccines that are effective, safe, and free. Promising new treatments, providing for hope that we can bring an end to the worst tragedies of this crisis. Record job growth, the strongest recovery in the world, and most of all, the chance to be together again with the people we love on Thanksgiving. Congress is once again failing to fulfill one of its most basic responsibilities, which is approving yearly appropriations bills to fund the government programs and services. With the October 1st deadline long past and Congress operating on a stopgap spending bill that will soon expire, federal employees who are fighting the worst crisis in a century, dealing with the shaky economy and responding to so many other urgent matters have been left in limbo. I know that millions of Americans are very worried about the government shutdown, which is scheduled in a few days and what it could mean for crisis relief beneficiaries. The ongoing money issues involve serious policy differences between the political parties, and these disputes are playing out in a high-stake political environment. Due to the fact that no agreement has been reached yet, federal agencies cannot make critical decisions regarding current programs. They also cannot launch new, and in some cases, urgent initiatives right now. This is very scary news for millions of Americans. The Biden administration argues that the gridlock is delaying badly needed investments in infrastructure, high poverty schools, and delaying increased staffing for the Social Security Administration. Many people are concerned that if a government shutdown does occur, that they will stop receiving their monthly relief payments. There is one option on the table. The legislative proposal supported by Senators James Lankford and Maggie Hassan is designed to prevent government shutdowns and force members of the House and Senate to meet the yearly deadline for approving appropriation bills. 
while a key provision of the bill would automatically impose temporary funding measures at current levels to avoid a shutdown if the deadline were not met. The legislation has other provisions designed to spur action. This bill would make it difficult for members of Congress by essentially forcing them to stay in Washington until regular funding is approved. Under the legislation, House and Senate members would be required to show up at Capitol Hill every day, including weekends, and be present for a mandatory quorum call. It is unfortunate to know that we have reached a point where legislative proposals are being offered to treat lawmakers like school children and impose a form of after-school detention. But the reality is that Congress is not doing its job. Instead of repeatedly playing this game, Congress should take steps to prevent a government shutdown from ever happening again. Friends, the key word for this video is grateful. If you would like to enter today's three $100 Walmart gift card giveaway, please make sure that you are subscribed to my channel, click and like this video, and comment below the key word. Thank you so much, friends. Now, according to CNN News, about 30,000 borrowers have been awarded public service loan forgiveness so far, which is amazing news. Catherine Rickfielder, a Florida public school teacher, is one of nearly 30,000 people who have seen their student debt balance reduced to zero since the federal government announced significant changes to a popular loan forgiveness program last month. The letter, which she received from the United States Department of Education, said that she would get credit for 91 additional payments that she made on her student loans. This means that she had already made more than 120 payments required for debt forgiveness under the new program. Now, in addition to the cancellation of her remaining student loan debt, she will also receive a refund for the extra payments yet she's made, which is really wonderful too. The eligibility for the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program is temporarily expanded until October 31st of next year. More than 550,000 people are expected to see their debt wiped away sooner than expected due to these changes. But many borrowers who newly qualify for debt forgiveness are still waiting to see their balances reduced. And CNN News says that it's going to take some time for the Department of Education to review all their accounts. Thank you so much, friends, for joining me here this Friday morning. And I hope you found some of this information helpful. Remember that I will be giving away three $100 Walmart gift cards today. If you would like to enter my giveaway, please make sure that you are subscribed to my channel, click and like my videos, and comment below the keyword from each video. Thank you so much, friends, and have a very blessed Friday.